All right, guys, how you doing? Hope you all had a good weekend. I stupidly underestimated how hot it was yesterday. Went to the beach uh, with the wife, and now my forehead looks like it's been toasted. <laughs> it really hurts. Uh, today, I've got a few things to discuss. One of those is a damage glitch, which has emerged since the maintenance. I want to talk about another change coming with TU11, and briefly discuss the Iron Horse World's first investigation, or lack of, should I say, and lastly, covering uh, the maintenance for tomorrow. If you enjoy this one and want to support me, drop a like down below, subscribe for division content, stick around until the end. And um, with that said, let's begin. First and foremost, damage glitch. Now, I never thought I'd make another video on this type of thing, uh, but this time, uh, from what I've seen, no one knows how to actually reproduce this glitch, and I've only seen it active in the dark zone, so it's not quite the same as, as the last one that had so much controversy. Now, I'd highly recommend any of you guys interested in trying to figure out how to reproduce this glitch so we can give the devs, you know, a detailed report uh, so they can try and fix it. Uh, take a look at a video from Cryptononymous. I think that's how you say it. Cryptononymous. I think that's how you say it. At around uh, the 5.35 mark in his video about this glitch, they show gameplay of this being used in a group of players. It's all the same group. They're all known to each other. Uh, and they're hitting like 500k crit body shots with the Eagle Berry. It's, uh, it's crazy numbers. People are dropping so quickly. Now, on review of the footage and the discussion within the video, I think it could be happening due to the Firewall Tactical Link stacking. But, you know what? I could be way off just because I'm just watching a video. I'm not actually doing it myself. The video is very good, so please go check it out. Uh, there, there is a possibility from the footage that this damage glitch happens dependent on the other player you are fighting and what they have, maybe a combination of their talents or, or, or one talent or some. I'm not quite sure, which is why it doesn't appear to have made its way into uh, kind of into PvE. Of course, if anyone does come across this sort of thing in PvE, then I'd highly recommend this be reported so the devs can try and fix it as soon as possible. Uh, you know, the last thing PvP needs is some sort of glitch that allows players to do incredible amounts of damage, likely without them even knowing how they've done it. So hopefully the devs can fix this one as soon as possible. But at, at least at right now, I don't know how this is working, and I've not seen any videos which um, show how it works so that this can be fixed. Moving on, and I recently talked about the rifle, MMR, and pistol nerf. Now, in that video, I provided a really long piece of feedback from user Bronson on Twitter, uh, whereby they talked about how the nerf had made crit and crit damage more powerful than it already was, rewarding body shots with crit builds than headshots with headshot builds. Of course, I agreed that headshots should play a vital role in PvP, as they really are the only difference in terms of skill when it comes to PvP in this game, followed by movement and, and map positioning. There is the skill of making a good build, of course, but in terms of actual skill, Aim is the big divider in all PvP games, and yet in the Division 2, crit is so powerful that you know, there really is no need to ever aim for the head. Now, following on from that, I've got an update on what's happening here. Christian Harmon on Twitter tweeted at Bruce saying, I'm very much hoping you'll roll them back on some of the weapons, especially the rifles, and of course, uh, they're talking about the nerfs. Rifles were a viable counter to the current meta, they could keep these builds at distance viably. Now they kill nothing, and these players chicken dance freely ad nauseum. So, quite rightly, if you nerf MMRs and rifles too much, it's impossible to combat the meta which currently exists in PvP right now, and it just exasperates the issue, which is what's happened. These weapons, in my opinion, with the right build, should do an incredible amount of damage, especially if you hit headshots. They are single fire, uh, you know, they're much easier to use uh, compared to other weapons like assault rifles where, you know, you can miss loads of bullets, but you're going to hit a lot anyway. Whereas with these kind of weapons, you know, if you miss, then you allow players to close the gap really quickly and, and you get yourselves um, in, in trouble pretty quickly. And of course, they're pretty useless up close for those reasons. Now, with the right build, I think MMR should be able to one-shot the head. I think rifles should be able to two or three tap headshot someone on PvP, uh, depending on uh, the variation of the rifle that you're using. Uh, the same way that crit builds up close can melt players in seconds. Now Bruce responded saying, I think the pistol rifle MMR adjustment didn't quite land where I hoped, and I'll be revisiting the numbers again for TU11 when I'm back from vacation next week. I think there's a better middle ground that preserves one taps to the head without needing a perfect uh, GC uh, headshot damage build. 
So I think overall a lot of players are going to be happy. A lot of PvP players are going to be happy about this. While certainly players who can appreciate the only real way to differentiate skill between two players. More than this, I'm really glad to see the devs actively looking at trying to improve the experience within PvP. It's not much of course here, but it's summer. And I'm all for the devs trying their best to find the best middle ground in that mode. Do I think PvP will ever make me want to play PvP in the game again? I doubt it. Uh, but a lot of people still enjoy the Dark Zone, and they enjoy PvP. So changes like these are important, along with fixes to glitches like the one I talked about at the start of the video. Next up, and I hate that I'm having to include this in today's video, but after Wednesday's State of the Game, I haven't really got a choice. Uh, when are the devs going to give us an update on the Iron Horse World's First Cheating Investigation? Now, I'm not naive, right? So I'm pretty confident that we are very unlikely to get any information about this investigation and I really think the devs have kind of uh, sidestepped this now. It's pretty disappointing that might be the case but actually not surprising to be honest. I'm not surprised that I'm having to call out the devs here because I really think we, the community, we are owed an explanation for the lack of information surrounding this even if it's news no one wants to hear and, and I think that's what it is. I think that's why the devs have not said anything because it it will be exactly what we don't want to hear. Uh, and that's this. Look, you know, I can imagine some sort of thing coming out like this. Look, we acknowledge that some people clearly had access to information that gave them an advantage when competing for the world's first race in Iron Horse. But to be honest, we've got more important things to focus our attention on, like a piece in the urine for replayable content, more weapons and gear, bugs, and, and lots of new stuff. We do really want to figure out uh, how these people got access to these PDF files of information, and we absolutely want to hold these people accountable. But right now, this will take attention and manpower away from building stuff in-game for you. So we've decided to put this in the side table and we may return to this in the future. This is what I think the devs want to say. Some kind of statement like this, but they don't want to say it at the same time because I think this is likely the truth. But I, I, I think a lot of people will take this as an excuse and just see right through it. Personally... I think people need to be held accountable. But if it's true that this would be at the expense of me getting some new content sooner, then I'd be selfish and I'd go for the content. For others, that might be different. And of course, it's quite possible only a small investigation is needed because let's be honest, the main suspects have already said they had access to this information. They've already owned up to it. So I don't really see why there's a whole lot of investigation that's needed, although I'm not the person having to investigate. I don't think we're going to hear anything more about this, to be honest, guys. So I see it in the streams and I see people talking about it. But honestly, guys, I'd say let it go. But, you know, I don't think we should. I also would say that just don't just don't expect to hear anything more about this because I really don't think we're going to hear anything more about this. I think they're going to put content in the way and expect us all to forget about it. So, yeah, it's a shame, really. Lastly, a maintenance will be performed tomorrow, you know, usual time. Uh, I just want to go over the maintenance notes so you guys know exactly what to expect from that tomorrow. Uh, so these are fix an issue that caused global event challenge progression to be reset upon switching uh, to a character that has progress on a previous event. Fix an issue that co uh, caused Morozova's phase 6 to not trigger when the negotiator's dilemma gear set caused Iron Horse HP to deplete. And I know a lot of people are going to be very, very, very happy about that. I know my clan, especially who go through this stuff all the time and have come across this, they're going to be very happy about that as well. Fix an issue with crashes that also cause Delta Free errors for players related to the reanimated global event. And then Phoenix Down Apparel event uh, closing. Uh, unfortunately, there's no news about the PS4 blue screens. There's no news about all the other bugs within the game. And we know, you know, at the end of the day, the devs came back from their like four week or five week break. Uh, on recently, so they've not had a chance to get through this stuff. What I didn't realize about these breaks is that it wasn't a break from streaming uh, and doing state of the game. It's actually a break from just general stuff, uh, and they just don't go to work for a month in Sweden. I, I didn't realize that. So I do appreciate that people need their time off, uh, and they're going to come back and then work on stuff. So uh, yeah, I'd like to see more stuff in this. I'd love to see more stuff in this maintenance, but I didn't expect there to be a whole lot. I didn't even expect a maintenance if I'm being honest with you. So that's it for today's video. Anyone hoping the apparel event would be extended due to you know the bug that was causing uh, players to have one week where they couldn't actually take part in the apparel event. Unfortunately, 
that's not happening, which is a real shame because I would have liked an extra week, if I'm being honest, on this um, on this uh, a part event because I've not done a whole lot on it and I would like to do more. I kind of like to, with a lot of these things, manhunts, all of these kind of global events and all that sort of stuff, I kind of leave, leave it to last minute to, to complete this stuff just because, like a lot of you guys, I'm... I'm really kind of uh, looking forward to more of the replayable content than the seasons and the stuff that we've already done from last season you know it's 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 rehashed content it's nothing new i did the first global event of the, of um of season two and it was new and whilst i didn't overly enjoy it it was new so it was it was great but uh, the other ones the ones that are in season two now they're all stuff that we've done before so i, I really like to leave that stuff uh, until the end but if you stuck around until the end of this video, I really appreciate all of your support. It really makes a positive difference to the success of this video and thus to, to my channel and to me. So thank you very much for watching and until the next one, guys. Epic out.